bad English, just especially most strongly connected uh, to poor education. So, Bhattak Krishna and I, some years ago, <coughs> wondered which specific linguistic elements would be involved in this identification of Southerners. Because we just be, you know, keep on being social psychologists and talk about this in a very general sense, but we wanted to know specifically what was involved. So we took the word guide. Now everybody knows one of the caricatures of the South. Southerners don't say guide because they don't say the diphthong I. They say instead, one, two, three, guide, right, guide. Can you guide me over there tonight? Right. All right. So we know that they monophthongize. This is called monophthongization, right? I is a diphthong. I is a monophthong. We wondered if the degree of this monophthongization would have an effect on recognition of Southern speech. Here's a real Northerner. Guy. Here's a real Southern. Guy. Yeah. But what we did was to take the real Northerner's voice and then acoustically modify it. Uh, with the stuff that you see in the middle here, which I don't have time to explain to you tonight. It was scientific stuff, believe me. <laughs> so we modified it, so we made seven steps of guide from fully diphthongized to fully monophthongized. Okay? Here they are. Guide. 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 So this went from guide to gag. Right? And I'm sure you can hear the difference between one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five. Couldn't you? Not only do you say you can't, but phoneticians told me and Bartek that we were crazy. They said nobody is going to hear this. The truth is that Americans heard it perfectly. There is a statistical difference between step one, step two, step three, step four, when we ask people to do this task. We said, you're going to hear a man and a woman say guide more times than you ever want to hear anybody say anything. We played it a lot of times, and we just mixed it up. And every time somebody says guide, you tell me what city they're from. Right? Easy. And you can see the cities were stupidly arranged from Saginaw, Michigan, straight down to Dothan, Alabama. So if people could hear those differences, that means the more monophong you had, the more Dothan 9 scores you would get, right? The more diphthong eyes, the more I like, the more 1 scores you get, and say it's from Saginaw. People got it exactly right to our amazement. Here you can see the mean scores, and there was a significant difference between each of those seven steps. In other words, you are capable of doing what you said you could not do. But the people who took the test, in fact, heard the differences in degree of monophonization. So that's really cool. In other words, now we know that I is a, that I is a southern stereotype. We knew this when we started. But now we know that degree of monophonization is a southernness stereotype, which we didn't know, but now we know something even cooler. The score for the man's and woman's voice were significantly different at each step. But this was not a man, real man or woman voice. We synthetically produced these voices. There was no difference between the man and the woman. The man and woman had the same degree of diphthongization or monophthongization at every step. You thought that women were from Venus and men were from Mars. That is a lie. Look at this. Women are from the north. And men are from the south. <laughs> <laughs> Women's voices have a more northern caricature stereotype value to them, and men's voices have a more masculine value to them. Oh, no wonder squirrel hunting and NASCAR and stuff like that, right? <laughs> so what does this tell us? <clears throat> tells us that bad English is associated with men. Sociolinguists already knew this. We thought we were a bunch of smart alecks. We know, for example, that in language use, women are always more standard speakers than men. 
We know that in language change, that women are always one generation ahead of men. Men are retarded in language change. They're always one, I know men are retarded in general, but, but in language change it's even more evident. You might have to argue about it in general, but in language change it's absolutely true. We have, we have uh, recordings, for example, of mothers and sons from mid-Michigan. Now, mid-Michigan is suffering this northern city's vowel change that's sweeping all across the, uh, the Great Lakes. And it goes out into rural areas later. And we find that mothers and their sons have exactly the same system. Daughters, right, of exactly the same age as the sons are a whole generation advanced. Men are retarded. Take that message. Who's taking notes? We're right down men are retarded. <laughs> Sorry, can you say that slower? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we went to, there, my wife was at a, a, a class in, uh, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, not long ago, and uh, a young man was, I can't remember what he was teaching about, but he was young, some young man from the north, a PhD candidate at Oklahoma State, and he was giving the lecture. An old feller was sitting there, and finally he looked in and said, uh, you know, could you talk a little bit slower? We don't hear so fast down here. Uh, that's the first time I'd everybody ever referred to Southern speech as slow, as everybody knows, but I'd never heard that Southern hearing was also slow. 